Height has long been a topic of debate in sprinting. While some argue that taller athletes naturally have an advantage, others believe that speed boils down to a mix of physical proportions, biomechanics, and training. Athletes of all heights, from the towering Usain Bolt to the shorter Trayvon Bromo, have proven that success in sprinting depends on more than just stature. Sprint performance primarily hinges on two measurable factors, stride length and stride frequency. Taller athletes often possess longer strides, enabling them to cover more ground with fewer steps. For instance, Usain Bolt covered the 100 meters in just 41 strides during his world record time of 9.58 seconds. On the other hand, shorter sprinters like Su Bing Chan, who ran the 100 meters in 9.83 seconds, took 48 strides but achieved a stride frequency of 4.88 steps per second. These differences highlight the complexity of sprinting mechanics and demonstrate why height alone isn't enough to determine speed. Studies reveal that factors like leg to torso ratio and ground force applications significantly influence performance. Understanding these dynamics helps explain why both tall and short athletes have excelled at the highest level of sprinting. Stride length, a key factor in sprinting, is often influenced by height. Taller sprinters with longer legs generally have an advantage as they can cover more ground with each step. Usain Bolt's stride length allowed him to complete the 100 meters with 41 steps, whereas shorter sprinters often require upwards of 45 strides to cover the same distance. However, height alone doesn't guarantee a longer or more efficient stride. Stride length depends on the ratio of leg length to body height. For instance, while a 6'3 sprinter may appear to have a stride advantage, their leg length might be identical to that of a 6'1 sprinter. Bolt's advantage stemmed not just from his height, but from his efficient biomechanics and ability to generate immense ground force. Research has shown that force application, not height, is the primary factor in stride length efficiency. Furthermore, overstriding, a common mistake among taller sprinters, can lead to inefficiency. This happens when an athlete's steps become too long, causing longer air time and reduced ground contact. Effective sprinting requires a balance between stride length and ground force, regardless of height. While leg length directly impacts stride length, Torso length affects sprinting in less obvious ways. A longer torso often means additional body weight, which can slow acceleration and reduce overall speed. For taller athletes, this weight becomes a factor during the explosive starts that are critical in sprinting. Michael Phelps and Hicham El Garouge provide an interesting comparison of body proportions in sports. Phelps, a swimmer, benefits from a long torso and shorter legs, much like a canoe's long hull that aids in water speed. Conversely, El Garouge, a middle distance runner, has shorter torsos and longer legs, ideal for running efficiency. Both athletes have similar leg lengths despite a seven inch height difference, highlighting how body proportions, not just height, impact performance. In sprinting, shorter torsos paired with long legs are considered ideal for forward momentum. Sprinters with a higher leg to torso ratio often excel because their lighter upper body reduces energy expenditure. This balance explains why athletes with varying heights can succeed by optimizing their body mechanics and proportions. Stride frequency, or how quickly a sprinter cycles their legs, is the second key component of sprinting performance. Unlike stride length, which often favors taller athletes, stride frequency tends to benefit shorter sprinters. Su Bing Chan, standing at 5'9", achieved one of the highest recorded stride frequencies at 4.88 steps per second during his 9.83 second run in the 100 meters. Taller sprinters generally struggle to achieve the same turnover rates because of their longer levers. For instance, Usain Bolt's stride frequency was 4.28 steps per second during his world record run. However, Bolt's stride length compensated for this, allowing him to maintain his top speed with fewer steps. Training can significantly enhance stride frequency. Explosive drills such as sled sprints and high knee exercises help sprinters shorten ground contact times and increase turnover. Justin Gatlin, for example, adjusted his training late in his career to increase stride frequency, taking 44 strides in his 9.80 second race in the 2016 Olympic trials, up from 42 strides in earlier years. Ultimately, the balance between stride length and frequency is essential for sprinting efficiency. While height may influence these factors, training and biomechanics can level the playing field. Usain Bolt, standing at 6'5", is a rare example of a tall sprinter who dominated the sport. Traditionally, taller athletes struggle with starts and quick leg turnover. However, Bolt's 41-stride performance in his world record, 9.58 second run, demonstrated an exceptional combination of stride length and frequency. Bolt's success stemmed from his ability to apply immense force to the ground, maximizing his long strides without compromising turnover. Despite his slower starts, he reached top speed faster than his competitors and maintained it longer. 
His biomechanics were also fine-tuned. His stride mechanics ensured his foot struck the ground efficiently, propelling him forward with minimal energy loss. Other tall sprinters, like Kamar Bailey Cole and Christophe Lemaitre, have not matched Bolt's success, even with similar heights and leg lengths. This highlights how Bolt's combination of natural talent, efficient mechanics, and disciplined training made him an outlier. His success redefined perceptions of tall sprinters and proved that height, when paired with optimal technique, can be a significant advantage. Taller sprinters face unique challenges despite their potential advantages. One major hurdle is weight. A taller athlete often has more body mass to propel forward, requiring greater force and energy. Ryan Bailey at 6'4", and close to 100 kilograms struggled to reach the efficiency of lighter sprinters, despite his stride potential. Overstriding is another common issue. When sprinters extend their legs too far forward, they spend more time in the air and lose ground contact, which is critical for maintaining speed. This inefficiency often slows acceleration and leads to slower times. Biomechanics play a significant role in addressing these challenges. Strength training and flexibility exercises help taller sprinters optimize their mechanics. Drills like bounding and resisted sprints can improve their starts and acceleration, where shorter sprinters often excel. By focusing on these areas, taller athletes can overcome their limitations and compete at the highest levels. Taller sprinters who want to compete at the highest levels must make significant adjustments to overcome the challenges posed by their height. Unlike shorter sprinters who can rely on natural quickness and compact builds, Taller athletes need to fine-tune their mechanics to address issues like overstriding, slower acceleration, and longer ground contact times. One effective strategy is optimizing acceleration. Taller sprinters often take longer to reach top speed, so focusing on explosive starts can help minimize this gap. Justin Gatlin, for example, increased his stride frequency later in his career to improve his starts. Taking 44 strides during his 9.80 second race, at the 2016 Olympic trials compared to 42 strides earlier in his career. Training methods such as sled pulls, resisted sprints, and bounding exercises have been shown to help taller sprinters improve their acceleration. Another area of focus is ground force application. Drills that emphasize quick ground contact, such as plyometrics and high knee exercises, allow taller sprinters to maximize their stride length while maintaining efficiency. Additionally, core strength and flexibility exercises improve stability and reduce the risk of injury, which is especially important for athletes with longer levers. These tailored strategies demonstrate how taller sprinters can turn their height into an advantage while addressing its inherent challenges. Shorter sprinters have proven time and again that they can compete with their taller counterparts despite having shorter stride lengths. By maximizing stride frequency and leveraging their compact builds, these athletes can achieve elite level speeds. Sprinters like Su Bing Chan and Trayvon Bromel, both under six feet tall, have clocked personal bests of 9.83 and 9.76 seconds respectively, showcasing the potential of shorter athletes. Stride frequency is the key weapon for shorter sprinters. Su Bing Chan achieved an astonishing 4.88 strides per second during one of his races, one of the highest frequencies ever recorded. This rapid turnover helps compensate for the shorter distance covered per stride. Compact builds also give shorter sprinters a lower center of gravity, which aids in balance and agility during starts and transitions. To further optimize their performance, shorter sprinters often focus on strength and power training. Plyometrics, explosive lifts, and drills targeting hip flexibility help increase stride length without sacrificing frequency. Additionally, shorter sprinters tend to excel in starts due to their ability to generate quick bursts of energy. This combination of speed, agility, and power allows shorter athletes to hold their own against taller competitors. As the science of sprinting evolves, so does the debate about whether tall or short athletes are more likely to break future records. Currently, Usain Bolt's 9.58 second 100 meter world record represents the pinnacle of sprinting. His 41 strides and ability to generate immense ground force set a standard that remains unmatched. However, as technology and training methods improve, both tall and short sprinters have the potential to rewrite history. Taller athletes like Fred Curley, who stands close to 6'3", with a personal best of 9.76 seconds, are considered prime candidates to challenge Bolt's record. Curley's combination of stride length, frequency, and a strong foundation in the 400 meters gives him a unique advantage. Similarly, shorter athletes like Trayvon Bromel and Letsile Tobogo demonstrate that high stride frequency and explosive starts can close the performance gap between shorter and taller sprinters. Technological advancements such as biomechanical analysis and specialized training equipment are leveling the playing field. Whether the next record breaker is tall or short, one thing is clear, success in sprinting will continue to rely on a combination of talent, training, and innovation. 
Height undeniably plays a role in sprinting, but it is far from the sole determinant of success. Taller athletes benefit from longer strides, while shorter sprinters excel with rapid stride frequencies and agility. Both groups face unique challenges and advantages, making sprinting a sport where diversity thrives. Usain Bolt's dominance as a tall sprinter and the achievements of shorter athletes like Su Bing Chan and Trayvon Bromo highlight the importance of biomechanics, training, and technique. Whether tall or short, the most successful sprinters optimize their strengths and minimize their weaknesses through tailored training programs and a deep understanding of their biomechanics. As the sport of sprinting continues to evolve, so too will the methods used to enhance performance. The interplay of height, mechanics, and innovation ensures that the track will always be a place where records are made and athletes of all shapes can shine. What do you think? Can shorter sprinters break Usain Bolt's record or will it take another exceptionally tall athlete to challenge it? Share your thoughts in the comments below.